You're wearing the wrong, uh, the wrong sweatshirt. You're supposed to be wearing like a Tampa Bay. Nah, no, no, I'm, no, no, I'm wearing the right one. I'm wearing the kids. <laughs> <laughs> the last time we spoke um, was for the clubhouse room last yep. week, and you were driving, picking up your kid, and meanwhile didn't lose you at least once. I didn't hear any police or anything like that. So I got you in a better controlled environment now. <laughs> Yeah, most most was, definitely most definitely more controlled environment than uh, than what it was last <laughs> time. But I mean, awesome. I mean, we made it work, and that was I had a great time on Clubhouse. I mean, that was a tremendous chat. I I enjoyed it. It was an hour. We went over the time we wanted to, yeah. but again, I thought it was I thought it was great. I had a great experience with that. Let's talk uh, siblings for a second here. Who has the best name? Kira, Creed, Stone, or Chance? Oh yeah, <laughs> those yeah, are awesome names, man. <laughs> No, I know. I got the short end of the stick on it. Like my parents were like, "It means good fortune." Like it, you're my baby. I was the first one. So <laughs> I was supposed to be named originally Titus, and I was like, "That would have been a cool one for sure." But then she was like, "I didn't want them to call you tight ass." You know, rugby was to some degree would be the center topic at the kitchen table. So you kind of let your stats do the talking, but you would never boast about it. But you can kind of feel the chip on your shoulder when you knew you had a great game. Um, and, and being the younger brother, you always try to get your older brother's approval, right? <laughs> How did you get into rugby? We were down at a park and there was a, there was a jumping castle. I think it was four. To be able to get onto the jumping castle, you had to sign up for the local rugby team. You know, me begging and you know crying, kicking and screaming to get onto it. The old man signed me up. That that was the catalyst, the jumping castle. The jumping castle is what got you where you are now. Who would have thunk? <laughs> Someone scores in the corner. Do you ever just go, "Come on"? You couldn't have gotten a little closer to the post. <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of or like they'll score in the corner and they'll just throw the ball away. So now I've got to go get the ball and bring yeah, it back. You and go I'm get just it. Like, yeah. <laughs> As amazing a moment as it is, I would never like celebrate because then I'm like straight away, oh, I've got to go, I've got to get ready and kick this ball now. And Ever any thought back then? I know you think about pro level, that kind of stuff, that one day be lining up against the All Blacks? <laughs> or were you maybe a little cocky going, Psh, hell yeah, I'm going to play against the All Blacks? <laughs> no, no. no I, I, I was always, uh, I mean, obviously, um, I had aspirations and dreams. Um, you know, I always wanted to. I'd be like, I was just more like, man, that would be so cool. Like, I, I wish, I hope I get the chance to play against them. You, you grow up wanting to be, you know, because all your friends played rugby. You watch it on TV. And now, you know, <laughs> if you can't play for them, play against them. Second best. I actually met Threaten while I was playing for Fiji because he was playing for some. Uh, he was jokingly he told me he's like, we should both play for America one day. And then fast forward to 2015 World Cup, we're lining up against someone in the first World Cup. Just been crazy, just how it just came full circle. Let's talk about your first cap. What do you remember the most about that that game? Man, I was on the bench, you know, still just in this whirlwind of like, can't even believe I'm here. And then next thing you know, Gabby's head splits open, and I have to just <laughs> I have to run on. And <laughs> It was crazy because, you know, like those girls I've only seen on the TV, like, you know, playing against Emily Scarrett, like, oh, man. John Mitchell emailed me and said, hey, we need a prop. We'll, we'll meet you in Romania. I'm just like, huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> you know, some guy who can't speak English picks me up at the airport holding the sign, spelled my name wrong. <laughs> just a little bit, like, come with me, get in the car. I'm just like, oh, man, all right. <laughs> like, sure. There was actually a saying when I joined USA, like my first USA against Canada game. Apparently there's a saying, probably shouldn't say this, but there's a saying in the USA campus called ABC, which means always beat Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Is we're tired of just being also reds. We're tired of just going to Rugby World Cups and making up the numbers and finding excuses because we've drawn against England and Ireland and Wales and, you know, Scotland and Argentina and saying, well, they're tier one teams. We've got to do something about it. You know, and the thing that we have to do about it is we have to develop American kids and get our pathways going. I see our, my role and our role as the USA Men's Sevens to, to be those pioneers to, to try and grow the game and, and pass on the, the knowledge and the learning to provide the opportunities for the next generation. I say to the boys, there's a lot of, lot of pressure on us and the, and the girls because it will be interesting to see what a medal would do for this game. If I have the number correct, you have 116 matches. I mean, that's a lot of rugby. Can you believe that? 16. <laughs> that's crazy. I mean, yeah, that makes sense. That's yeah. a lot. That is a lot. I didn't know that. I'll never forget it. My first roommate on tour, Chris Bowman. I mean, oh, <laughs> such, a, such a legend. When you roomed with him in those in Romania, was it in an RV? 
<laughs> I wish it would have been, man. Oh, man, the Roman RV is great. He was snoring. I'll tell. I'll say that much. He was snoring when I showed up at 12 o'clock at night. Um, hair was, you know, flowing in the wind somehow in the room. It was just still flowing somehow. I get it. With no wind. Yeah, no wind. It, just... it, it was still waving. Somehow it was still waving. Pretty much every Irishman I've become good friends with loves to sing. Uh, is that oh, you? I can sing, but I like to think I can sing sometimes, you know? Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, so, so if you're going to ask me to sing, no, it is, you know, you, you probably have no <laughs> listeners uh, after that. So I play a bit of ukulele and guitar. Do you have it right there next to you? I'm going to put you on the spot. Say no. <laughs> no I, I don't. I, I, I do not, but maybe, maybe next time. Maybe next time. We should be able to put together some kind of band between the Tin Whistle, uh, Paul Asike on guitar, McWilliams on guitar. I'm sure there's some singers in the bunch. <laughs> uh, Paul Asike is, is an absolute, he's a fantastic singer. Who, who knows? Who knows? We'll see, we'll see what the, the future holds. What are your international goals forward? You know, is it still USA first? Or maybe what would happen if France came calling? <laughs> oh, uh, there it is, the difficult question. No, I've, I've thought about it, but honestly, I have to go with USA. Uh, wouldn't be here without the, without them in the first place. Wouldn't be here without their, their support, uh, without their love. You know? Yeah, love, one day yeah. love to come out and represent the uh, USA, the Eagles. Has there been less contact since you moved to center the last two matches? Uh, uh, that move to center you know physically the first game I was like how do you justify feeling good in the backs because I didn't hit I think I made two tackles (laughs) I was like it's strange do you have a message for Janine and Kate for tomorrow's match (laughs) (laughs) I'm coming for you anything like that (laughs) I will give them different messages post game but uh, Pre games. So I'll see you tomorrow, and I'm excited. <laughs> oh, man, this is very <laughs> diplomatic. <laughs> yeah, it has to be. Uh, Gabby Cantorna has been killing it. I can't really say that because this is going to go out, isn't it? So she's going to see me paying her a compliment. But okay, I'm... so she's doing horrible. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's, that's the Gabby that I know. Yeah, that is definitely the that I know. Yeah, yeah. You heard how he feels about your kicking game and about how you're playing. Uh, how is he as a coach? <laughs> He's not very direct. He doesn't answer a lot of questions. And it sort of feels like he's asking us to coach ourselves, which is either A, a really good way of delegating, or just like B, his way of saying he doesn't know. Um, But I personally haven't been able to get to the bottom of which one it is. But again, with like the accent and everything about him, it's just hard to tell because he, you know, he is English. I just want to play 15. I just, I miss miss 15 a lot. Uh, I just feel like it was a rare opportunity and like, and I'm from a small town, so like being getting an opportunity to live in London, it just like I didn't want to pass up. So when my agent came to me, he's like, "Saracens, uh, they they are interested in, in, in me and stuff like that." I was I was blown away. So if you go to any rugby player in the world and they and they you say to them, "Listen, Saracens wants you to come," I think they're going to be like, "Yeah, I'm going for sure." If you said to me at the start of the uh, the start of the Premiership that I would have played five games, played all the 80 minutes, and I would have I would have been telling you, "You're joking." Do they even have a reserve lock on the bench right now? Because they don't—they don't really need to. You're playing every 80 minutes. <laughs> yeah, they do. They definitely do. Because some games, I don't feel like I'm going to get to the 80. Is it more important for you to win the Premiership or just finish better than Craig Peterson? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, they—they they beat us away up there. It's like the third game of the season, yeah. which I wasn't too happy about. But he's—he's uh, he's playing some excellent rugby, like which is great to see. Um, I was able to catch up with him after the game, but. Nah, we're going, we're going for the title, obviously, with that question. Got to gotta, gotta, gotta win the <laughs> Premiership. Course. That's the goal. It was really hard to put into words how fun that week and that experience was. Having a starting shirt was also pretty incredible for me. I actually have it um, right here. I haven't gotten a chance to wash it yet. I don't think I actually can. I had all the girls sign it. It smells interesting, but I will definitely <laughs> be putting that in a, in a shadow, shadow box in my uh, office. Great. Once you take that field, whether you have one cap or 40 caps or 50 caps, it doesn't matter. Like, it's it's you against them. And so I will miss that. You know, I'll miss that because it was a, it was certainly a moment that you can't replicate anywhere else. Well, you can try it in, in, in the corporate world, but, you know, it's just not the same. Um, I had my seven minutes against Tonga where I just absolutely missiled my body into everything I could. Unfortunately, in pretty much the first tackle, I busted my AC joint, my left AC joint. So I was playing for five minutes with one arm. But again, for me, it just it, it felt like the right time to, to give the next next crop of hookers coming through 
um, their opportunity. I would love to see myself at the 2023 World Cup. That's definitely the plan. Take it year year by year for now. Like I, do, I, w- I would love to, to, to play in Atlanta because I think Scott Lawrence, who's the coach at Life University, and then he actually, it's funny for the Scotland game that USA won, Scott, Lawrence came in and did like a week of defense prep with us and like unbelievable like he's just he's he's unbelievable the detail he goes into and the, the video analysis and the prep so I, I would I would definitely enjoy that too so uh, we'll see see how things go well who knows maybe we'll see you in the states coaching MLR or hey. or or putting on a number two for uh, the New England Free Jacks <laughs> Tom TK from the Free Jacks uh, yeah uh, he's a very good he's a very good mate of mine. I reckon I get about two messages a week from him, just to, just checking in to see if I'm available and what I'm up to. And I, I ask him, I say, man, what's the weather like? And he goes, oh, it's about 20 degrees Fahrenheit. And I go, well, there's your answer. <laughs> Come on down and all, man. We'll get you a shirt, get you down there. Like I said, we'll, we'll talk to Mop and see if we can sub you off uh, and get you on there wearing the 23, get you a try there in the corner like Julian Dominguez did on the weekend. <laughs> Dude, I, I've been on the stationary bike at least twice last week, so I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's all you, hey, that's all you need. You're good. Uh, I'm still eagerly awaiting that invite for the 225-pound over division. I am waiting <laughs> for that RSD score. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thanks, Paul. I really appreciate it, and, and thanks for having me on again. I uh, love love what you do, and, and it's long may continue. Follow, follow the show. I'm not on social media, but my brother, my brother sends me stuff about the about your, your shows with the other boys so I try to catch up whenever I can if there's any, anything I can ever do to help you out man please let me know I'm a, I'm a huge fan and thank you for what you're doing for American Rugby and uh, giving guys opportunities so thank you thank you aloha